brings me great pleasure to officially inaugurate the National Council on Privatization. The mandate is one of commercialization, privatization, optimizing government investment. Once you know you do engagement of stakeholders in any reform exercise that you do, you are likely to allay all fears. You are likely to get people comforted to appreciate the direction you are going and to be with you in following that direction. It will not be difficult to shape you know, uh, a solution. Welcome to Otna, your window to information on optimization. For some people, success is greatness, but for others, consistency is actually what leads to success. And sure, when you keep working positively at what you do, success will surely follow. At the Bureau of Public Enterprises, BPE, Reforms are a driving force for economic growth. And the Bureau of Public Enterprises is very consistent under the leadership of the current Director General to ensure that reforms bring success to Nigerians. There is no doubt that the strategic reforms carried out by the BPE are yielding fruits and the results are clear for all to see. One of such forms of our basis of discussion today. Welcome. This is Otna optimizing the nation's assets. Here on Otna, we come to show you the success stories of reforms as implemented by the Bureau of Public Enterprises, guided by the National Council on Privatization, NCP, which is headed by Vice President, His Excellency Senator Kashim Shetima, GCON. Many countries across the world support hydroelectricity as a reliable source of power. But it's important to know that Nigeria is one of such countries that is particularly endowed to sufficiently benefit from hydropower. What has the government done? What has the Bureau of Public Enterprises done? And what does the future hold? That forms our discussion on Otna today. Let's meet my guests. This is Otna, optimizing the nation's assets. My guest today was listed as a number four on the list of 75 most influential people in hydropower globally by IWP and DC, an international organization. He is a respected hydro expert within Africa, West Africa, and beyond with about 40 years experience in the power sector. He's the MD CEO of Mainstream Energy Solutions Limited, MESL, and is proudly Nigerian. Let's welcome engineer Lamu Audu to Otna. Thank you very much, sir, for Thank joining you, us. Thank you, doctor, for having me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you're and welcome. Now, let's begin by understanding your role in the Nigerian Reform and Privatization Program. And um, we would like to understand this from perspective of when you came into mainstream. We know the background that you have been there even before um, as MD and then, so tell us the, just the story of your role as you came in. All right, uh, we can look at it from different per perspective, but I think I will uh, uh, limit it to our involvement as a private company in the uh, privatization process, uh, you know, being driven by BPE. Uh, Mainstream Energy Solutions Limited is a wholly Nigerian company incorporated in 2011 for the sole purpose of participating in the uh, privatization process uh, of uh, the uh, power sector in Nigeria, which of course was the first of its kind that ever took place. Um, we participated along with other international players and um, I would want to also bring to your notice that uh, the process was uh, very transparent as it was midwifed by international consultants, you know, to ensure um, equity and transparency. Uh, in fact, that explained why BP had to undertake uh, uh, roadshows across the world, you know, to be able to attract international investors. So we participated in the process and uh, here we are, uh, it's now history 
then stream one, the bid uh, to be the concessionaire of Kainji and Jeba hydropower plants with a combined installed capacity of 1,338 megawatt. Actually, they are the first two uh, hydropower generating plants in Nigeria. Kainji was commissioned in 1968 and Jeba started commissioned operation in 1983. So um, our involvement, our desire or the motive actually to participate was driven by, um, you know, the opportunities we saw. Um, as Nigerians, we all know the energy deficit we have, you know, and um, the gap that existed, the, the demand for power and all that. And um, considering how these assets were actually um, being managed by the government then, you know, the power sector evolved from uh, ECN, you know, the Electricity Commission of Nigeria, and then uh, the Niger Dam Authority, which was Kainji, uh, which came or brought up the establishment of uh, the national grid. Because ECN had um, power plants that were located at the lot centers before the advent of NDA, which was Kainji and Jeba. You know, we had power plants scattered all across the country in Ijora, Kaleba, Kano, Meduguri. You know, there was no grid then you know, interconnecting the power plants, and they were mostly uh, diesel-driven uh, generating uh, plants. So, um, NDA came, and so NEPA was created when ECN and NDA were merged. You now, NEPA and the National Electric Power Authority came into being. And uh, as a result of the uh, uh, the privatization process after the enactment of the Electricity Sector uh, uh, Reform Act um, 2005, um, PSCN, you know, was born. You know, as a result of unbundling of the uh, then NEPA assets, you know, and uh, that was the uh, beginning of the privatization process uh, where investors were invited to participate in the generation and uh, distribution value chains of the sector. As an investor, you, you made it clear that you came in because uh, you saw opportunities, but I'm sure you also saw challenges. Uh, paint a picture, uh, especially because you've been around the power sector for a long time, so you also know about the challenges. What was it really like before mainstream took over um, under your leadership as Pioneer MD? Yes. Um, one of the major challenges was actually lack of investment in the sector that led to the decay of the assets. Obviously, um, you will all agree that uh, you don't manage uh, huge assets such as uh, power assets, which require huge capital layout through the appropriation or budgetary system that we have. So. Um, the decision of the government to actually privatize was, was really well thought out and uh, it was a welcome idea because that is the international uh, best practices now. You, you don't allow such assets to be run uh, by public uh, uh, process or through public uh, uh, entities. And so the challenges were really huge, but the major one was really lack of investment, apart from the human factor which we had to deal with and we are still dealing with, but being a private company, we are definitely more efficient and uh, we have access to experts across the world. You know, uh, we are getting through some of, or rather navigating through some of these issues. But um, definitely um, our, our eagerness to participate was really born out of our desire uh, and, and based on our corporate objective to one, as I've said earlier, to close the energy gap in Nigeria, at least uh, we will play, play our role, and to also add value to the stakeholders. 
uh, including uh, government, um, uh, consumers, electricity consumers, uh, of course, uh, our shareholders that invested in the business, and uh, by extension, the communities within which we operate our business. So these are some of the objectives, and uh, thank God, um, despite the challenges, you are able uh, to... we are able to at least uh, get some support, financial support, because um, Kainji, I think uh, the investment then was in dollars. You know, we had to pay the commencement fee, and in fact, up to today, the uh, concession fee is denominated in dollars. And you can just imagine what that means um, when you have to uh, look at the gap between the Naira and the dollars at any time T. So these are some of the challenges. The other challenge we had was the fact that you have to sell your energy through the single buyer model. That was one issue we met on ground, uh, which was really very challenging from the onset. It was a big issue. Uh, that, uh, uh, but thankfully, the government is uh, listening uh, to the extent that now the regulator has allowed um, a combination of um, the vesting contract and bilateral contract to go by, side by side with the hope that very soon the market will liberalize and uh, it will now operate uh, fully bilateral market. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, that you know, tallies with what uh, President Bolaame Tinubu is thinking about when it comes to uh, ensuring that the sectors are liberalized. Uh, let's, let's take a moment, shall we, and uh, go with the MD to take a look at Kainji that he just mentioned and get to know about the background, where it started, and um, some of the things that we need to know. And when we return, we'll be finding out about accountability and where we're headed at mainstream. Don't go away. This is Otna. This project was actually conceived in 1958, but then Northern Nigeria, with the disability and everything, started then, even before independence. Right? But the construction proper uh, came in, in uh, or started in earnest in 1965. First generating unit uh, came into the market operation in 1968. And you can see the power plant was commissioned on the 15th of February 1969 by the then military head of state, General Yabukukon. It was during the Civil War. Five units are currently operating here in Kain. In Jeba, out of the six, three are operating. But you can see that unit four and six, that even though they are showing zero zero, they are available. Okay, okay. It is due to grid issue or water management okay. that they are currently not on the grid. Okay. Yes. Unit five is under overhaul. Okay. We took it out normally. Unit six, when we took over as a concessionaire, unit six was the only unit that was out of operation okay. in Jeba. Okay. It was burnt. Completely. Oh, oh, complete. So, one complete. So, now we have recovered it with 96.4 megawatts. Mm. We have now moved to the next unit, Unit 5. Mm. Yes, the contractor is on site. But Kaiji was designed for 12 generating units. Up to the point we took over this plant, only 8 were in 
So we still have space for hope. Otna, optimizing the nation's assets. Welcome back. I'm sure that was very revealing for you, getting to know where it started many years ago before some of us were born and um, where we are now. It gives a hope and a sense that the future for our country, Nigeria, is indeed bright. Uh, my guest today is engineer Lamu Audu, and indeed he's uh, taking us around where it all started and where we are headed. And to ensure that we get to know more, uh, let's find out about accountability and the future of mainstream. So once again, Angel Lamu, Audu, FHA, FNSE, thank you very much once again for joining us. Thank you. Now, let's find out about, because one of the problems that has occurred in most enterprises is management. Yes. And um, we know that the BPE, uh, they have a monitoring system to ensure that things are done well. Tell us how the BPE has monitored your system, what results you've gotten from that monitoring and how you're working to ensure accountability and sustainability of what has been done. All right, thank you. Um, I think I must at this point uh, commend BP for really ensuring that um, uh, players like us and particularly concessionaires that are actually managing uh, the government asset because the assets still belong to the federal government of Nigeria. From the beginning, we had a clear KPI, which guides BPE's, you know, uh, monitoring of our activities. And uh, of course, we are equally guided by that. We are expected in the first place, for example, at Kainji, and uh, by uh, to a lesser extent, Jeba, to recover the installed capacities of these two power plants. Which you showed us when we went downstairs, you yes. showed us the recovery yes. that had been done so Absolutely. far. Yeah. So um, BP has always been uh, monitoring the activities uh, to ensure, one, that uh, the recovery process is done within the time limit, I mean, allowable by the contract, by the concession agreement. And uh, not only that, the quality of work we do um, um, BP ensures that uh, it is uh, up to the uh, best practices internationally. So there are usually teams that comes, you know, to site, you know, to ensure that whatever we are telling the, the government is actually being done. And uh, that has helped us tremendously in ensuring that we are kept on our toes. Mm -hmm. that, that, that brings me to the safety part. Uh, I know that um, we may not be able to talk fully about uh, the dam and all the others on this episode. We'll bring that up later. Yeah. But what's mainstream doing? I, I, I just, it comes to mind what happened in Libya, uh, where a lot of people died. What's mainstream doing in maintaining this dam and ensuring the security of lives and property? Yes, I, I must say that um knowing fully well the consequences of uh, um, a collapsed dam, um, mainstream uh, on taking over of these assets uh, did a review or assessment of the safety standard of the two Hado dams. That was the first thing we did. Because actually the government was supposed to have done the auditing you know, of the assets before handing over to us. But that didn't happen somehow. But what we did was to really bring experts that did the assessment of the safety. That's number one. Uh, after which, we now ensured that uh, all those areas that were lagging as a result of the management of the assets before we took over, we quickly uh, ensured that uh, they were corrected. Uh, not only corrected, but we modernized the operations and maintenance of the dams. Even before we commenced the recovery process of the generating units, that was the first thing we did. Um, we entered into partnership and collaboration with <coughs> international dam experts 
like the Canadian Dam Association, the International Center for Hydropower, based in Norway, um, to support us. And with your academy, uh, you are also doing something um, really amazing from, from what we've seen um, in the academy. Uh, uh, well, this really speaks to excellence, which is expected. As we conclude, because we don't have all the time on this edition, yeah. but on the second edition, we'll be able to look at a few other things. Yeah. Um, you and I know, sir, that Nigerians are in a hurry to see results. The Bureau of Public Enterprises also wants to ensure that these results are seen as quickly as yesterday. Um, what do you see in the future? With the right support, what will mainstream be bringing on board the power sector? Right. Um, our wish really is not limited because as a corporate body, uh, one single entity as mainstream really may not be able to solve all the problems in Nigeria today. But the success of companies like mainstream will really encourage others, you know, to invest in the power sector in Nigeria. So our wish going forward is that let there be a consistent policies that will give comfort to investors. Um, policies that will give you uh, a clear line of sight to return on investment and ensuring that you also comply with best practices in managing the assets. Because if you are not able to recover whatever investment you have done, out of which you will be able to recoup and plow back into the business, then you will definitely be performing uh, below, below yes, below expectation. You will not be able to train your staff. You will not be able to bring in the best equipment as that went due. So all this uh, needs to be put in place. Now, uh, we spoke about liberalization earlier. Um, our wish is for the BPE to be allowed and with the support of the regulator to be allowed to have a fully liberalized electricity sector in Nigeria. By that, um, you will see funds flowing into the sector without, I mean, uh, having any uh, challenges as it is now. Because uh, one of the biggest challenges is for us to really get uh, sufficient funding. Because a situation where you still have serious liquidity issues in the sector. Mm. You know, invoices are not paid, you know, and uh, definitely you cannot meet up with your responsibilities. So, but once the sector is liberalized, we can sell our power to um, big industries that employ you know, Nigerians. More employment opportunities are created. We'll be able to pay our fees, taxes, royalties, you know, all those things, uh, we can be able to meet our obligations without any uh, serious challenge. But right now, um, one of the biggest issue in the sector is illiquidity, especially of the bulk electricity trader, the trading company that is expected to uh, collect our, so you, they are actually, you can now see the contingent liability they are piling on government for, as, a, as a result of lack of collection of, uh, yeah. Yeah. But do you see hope with things done right for the future? Great hope because Nigeria has huge potential. Huge potential. One, we have the market. The demand is there because it is the market actually that attracted us in the first place. So with the right atmosphere, the right ecosystem. In fact, Nigeria should be a hub for not generating enough power for its use, but we should be able to export. Mm. What I mean is that we can earn foreign exchange. If from we power utilize, itself. yes, from power. Mm. If we are able to harness the resources that we have in this country today, both hydro and thermal, but mm. more so hydro, because hydro gives you one clean energy. As a nation, we should be moving towards net zero carbon emission. Mm. That's number one. Number two, you have cheap power from hydro. Mm is sustainable. 
very very sustainable you know you, you for a hydro dam like this you you see there are a lot of you can manage flood because that's the main essence of a dam yeah. in the first place dams were originally designed to manage flood where you can release the water you know gradually without having uh, in, uh, uh, impact on the riparian communities right you have navigation water supply ir irrigate you know a lot of things comes as a result of uh, Hydro acid. Yeah, yeah and so that's I, 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 I wish we had more time, but we would have to uh, leave it there for today. Uh, let me thank you very much, NJ and Lamu Audu. Uh, and let me plead with you that we we'll need to, um, in the next edition, still speak with you because we need to, seeing is believing, yeah. we've heard quite a lot. We need to go and see the academy, for instance, see what's actually happening there, see the human resource that is being built, as you mentioned. We need to also see the dam itself and see what it's actually bringing out and be sure that uh, with this um, hope is not just being heard of yeah. but it is renewed and it is seen at the end of the day let me thank you very much thank for you, joining man. us on thank this edition uh, engineer thank lamu audu and that's it on this edition of otna optimizing the nation's assets our guest today fellow of the nsc is engineer lamu audu and he's told us quite a lot about what positive things can be done through hydropower. And next week, we'll be bringing you much more as we get to look at um, the achievements done in Kainji and where it is at the moment. On behalf of the crew here at Niger State, Nigeria, my name is Tokwe Ujeme. It's bye for now. Optimization on the go.